Hey, welcome to the Smoker Builder Podcast. I'm Frank Cox, the barbecue pit engineer. And uh, today's podcast, we're going to talk about how thick a material is really necessary for your offset smoker. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, glad you're here today. Listen, I just uh, been going through some questions and stuff like that. We have this new website called Smoker Builder U. Um, you're all welcome to join us there. It's a private uh, club, I guess you could call it, for smoker builders. Anyone who's interested in that sort of thing. And uh, it's free to join, smokerbuilderu.com. Anyway, not just trying to plug that, but in there we've got a uh, poll going, a uh, question really, about all the different subject material that uh, they, you guys would like me to cover on this podcast. I'd sure like to hear your input. Uh, if you don't mind, go on over there, sign up, and uh, you can answer that question too. But just to get on into it here, um, you know, I figured that I would go ahead and cover this topic first. And uh, because, you know, right now steel's expensive. And, uh, you know, it really honestly depends at the end of the day, you know, how much you, what you can buy, right, that, to build your own smoker. But there's also a lot of guys out there that aren't wanting to buy their own smoker and are interested in, you know, buying something. And how do you know whether or not you're getting screwed when you buy them, when you buy a smoker? Like, you know, so here, we're going to talk about that today. So... I'm out here in my in my barn uh, where I park my big offset bingo, and you know whenever we build a smoker like bingo, it's a 500 gallon offset. Um, it's actually the long skinny offsets. If you've not seen pictures of it, it's got a it's basically all propane tank. There's no flat metal in it except for where the firebox door is, and uh, maybe the little throat baffle thing. But uh, Anyway, it's all tank, and uh, so you know when we build a cooker like that, we're kind of limited by what the tank is made out of, you know, and that's, uh, you know, what got me kind of thinking about this is that cooker right there has varying thicknesses of material. The heads are a little bit thinner than the walls of the tank, you know, and uh, it's, it's right around quarter, I think, for the most part, you know, just from what I remember, maybe a little thicker. It's not quite five sixteenths, but... Um, <clears throat> you know, and that, that thing performs, I'm telling you, like I'll put it up against anybody's pit. It's my favorite pit I ever built. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that are using pipe. Um, one thing about pipe is that, you know, it's, it depends on what diameter you get, what thickness you're going to be stuck with. And so what I'm basically, uh, going to tell you here is, is a list of, of, uh, like three main things to consider when you're deciding what thickness of uh, steel to use for your build and or if you're buying a pit what is important to know okay so <clears throat> the, you'll hear a lot of guys these days marketing these backyard offsets and when I say a backyard offset I'm talking about something that's about 24 inches diameter and they're typically about 42 to, you know, somewhere in the 42 to 48 range, something like that in uh, width. And, uh, you know, they're all saying three-eighths thick steel, three-eighths thick steel, you know. And, and the thing about that three-eighths thick steel, I don't know if you ever lifted a piece of three-eighths plate or not, but, uh, you know, per square foot quarter inch is 10.25 pounds per square foot. So just a just one square foot, that's 12 inches by 12 inches, is 10.25 pounds. So you start adding up square footage of, of surface area of that material, it can get pretty heavy. 50 square feet is 500 and something pounds, you know. So uh, it, it doesn't take long to add up. Now let's talk about three-eighths. It's half again as thick as quarter. So you've got quarter inch and then let's take half of that an eighth of an inch thick more and you wind up with three eighths so it's logical to assume just round numbers i didn't google this or nothing but it's around 15 pounds per square foot right so that weight adds up really fast and uh you know when you're buying material you're paying for that price per pound so that's why this uh these pits go for what they go for let's say okay 
Now, is that really necessary uh, for you as the consumer it, on the pit that you're going to use? You know, is this really going to help you out? So let's get into some thermal dynamics kind of talk. When we're when we're dealing with a smoker, what we're trying to do is heat that thing up to around 200 and something to 300 degrees, right? It depends on if you're a low and slow guy or a hot and fast guy. So really what matters at the end of the day is a couple of things. How clean do you want your fire? How hot do you want to cook? And how, how often do you want to add fuel to the pit? Some of the factors that impact that are going to be things like the design of the firebox, you know, the volume compared to your cook chamber, um, your throat opening, the length of your stack, like the overall volume of that smokestack, things like that. And, uh, you know, if you run everything too tight of a tune, you wind up having to build a very small, very clean fire. If you build it bigger than you need or whatever you do, have a lot more draw, smaller air inlet, you know, smaller firebox, it gives you some flexibility on the fire. You can actually throw a lot more wood at your fire and uh, you can get some, you know, blue smoke out of that. It's not, it's okay, blue, clear, whatever you want, just don't go white or gray, right? Because that's the nasty smoke. So when you start building your fire and running your pit, it's going to, it, really matters like how thick the material is that you've got to heat up and how long it retains the heat. So the thicker the material, the more BTUs it's going to take to heat that material up. Once it gets hot, it will retain that heat longer, right? So when we say longer, what is that compared to? Well, thinner material, okay? So three-eighths will take a very long time to get to let's say 300 degrees with a small fire. You gotta build a much bigger fire and uh, you gotta run it much hotter to get there faster. If you have a thinner cook chamber, it's gonna get to temp in like 10 seconds. Think of an ugly drum. When you fire up an ugly drum, that thing's only a 16th of an inch thick. And that thing gets to temp fast. I mean, I'm, I basically don't even have time to walk in, grab my stuff and come outside. If it's been sitting and it's got the rub on it and it's been sitting in the fridge for a while and, you know, I don't have to do any prep work to it. By the time I get outside, I'm already at 250 on a, on a drum smoker. So it heats up very, very fast, right? Now, if that would be an offset, I'd be sitting there feeding the fire for an hour, probably trying to get that thing up to temp, sometimes even longer if it's a bigger pit. So I don't necessarily believe that heavier material is necessarily better simply because it takes so long to get hotter, to get hot. Now, if you look at the, let's say that you overshoot your temperature, you built a great big fire and uh, that cooker comes up to temp and, uh, but you still got that great big rare and fire in there and you got all the coals, huge coal bed going and you put your food on there and you go back inside, there's a, there's a thing that happens when you're, when you start to get a majority of your fire becomes coal bed and the minority part of your fire becomes, is like the wood that you have left over to burn yet. You could wind up with a temperature spike. Like you'll have this swing in temperature that it just gets really hot because now we got a lot of surface area of coal bed and we heat, we superheat that cook chamber, let's say. Well, now it's going to take a while to cook, to cool down. This is one reason why I always said don't insulate cook chambers on an offset smoker. So it just basically you wind up almost having to open the doors and remove coals and or use a water hose and cool your pit down on the outside of the skin. Some kind of a heat sink to get rid of that heat if you overshoot temp, especially if it's an important cook. So overall, here's kind of what I would say. I recommend a quarter of an inch for offset smokers. And, uh, you know, that's a really, really good common industry thickness. You're going to wind up uh, having thick enough material without breaking the bank with really heavy material. The only time I would say that it's worth it to go with a 3 8 wall is if you're able to buy the material cheaper than you can get anything else. Then I would look at it. Um, but just buying three-eighths or heavier thick material, I've even had guys ask me if they could use five-eighths. 
um, which is more than a half of an inch thick, by the way, if you, if you don't know fractions with inches. Um, it's pretty thick. So I, I just, you know, I don't recommend it. You're basically wasting a lot of money to get the same performance that you would get out of a quarter of an inch thick material. Now, let's go to the other side of the equation. How thin is too thin? Well, I've built a lot of pits out of air tanks. Um, matter of fact, the first few I built were water tanks or air tanks. Um, this is before I, uh, I came to terms with the fact of cutting propane tanks. And that's how long I've been doing this. So, you know, air tanks are usually about an eighth of an inch thick. Um, water tanks typically are not like really heavy pressure. They're usually like a storage tank, I'm talking. Um, like, for instance, my first uh, trailer mounted reverse flow smoker was built out of the water tank off of a concrete truck. And, uh, of course, it had baffles and all kinds of stuff in it I had to cut out of it. Um, but it was only an eighth of an inch thick. And, you know, it worked fine. I cooked some fantastic grub on it. It really honestly didn't take more energy to run that pit um, than it did anything else I've ever built. The catch is, is that if, in fact, you know, you wind up with heavy winds or a rainstorm, uh, yeah, you'll lose your heat pretty quick. But so would the big guy. It's just going to take a little bit longer, like a fraction of the time longer. Um, not, you know, not instant. If if you get a rain shower coming down on an air compressor tank smoker, it's only an eighth of an inch thick. Yeah, you're going to lose heat pretty dang quick. <laughs> so that's the, that's the only drawback I can think of. But man, we've built a lot of pits. You know, there's a very well-known manufacturer that build has built a lot of competition grade, very big, fancy paint jobs and stuff, smokers. I'm not going to drop a name, um, you know, but this is back from the early days. Back in the day, their smokers were all built out of 10 gauge, and that was simply because they had a roll that could roll it. That's the only reason. Um, matter of fact, you can get a lot of smokers right now that are made out of eighth inch that aren't bad. So uh, as far as do they cook? Yes. Do they cook the product that you like? Yes. Are there a few drawbacks? Well, maybe as far as like how long it lasts or how long it takes to rust out. But overall, it's still a great pit. And I don't think you're really going to kick yourself for working with a, small, a thinner piece of material. So as far as my advice, when it comes to the thickness of material from a builder, use the cheapest thing you can get. Try to stay around a quarter of an inch. If you're a consumer and you're looking to buy a smoker that is already built for you, I would probably lean towards maybe not three eighths, honestly, because you're paying for that material, especially if it's a production shop that's doing it because they're paying for prime material. And that prime material, I'll tell you right now, um, the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest price I've found on 24 inch three eighths wall pipe, if I bought 40 foot sticks that were seconds now, like these are not the prime papered material. These are seconds. The cheap, and I'm talking a semi load. That's like five plus 40 foot sticks. The best price I could get is a buck 50 a pound. So that winds up being about six, seven hundred dollars in landed cost just for the pipe, for the cook chamber. We're not talking about the whole rest of the pit. So to be to be a professional pit builder and use pipe, if you're going to do any scale of that. You've got to be able to buy a lot of this pipe. Uh, you know, that's a 40 foot stick is 10 cook chambers. So if that's all you're going to build for a year, that's one thing. But if you're building a lot of these things, you're going to have to book loads of pipe. And, uh, you know, that material cost adds up. And at the end of the day, the end consumer winds up paying for it. So in my opinion, I would totally not, the, 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 there is not enough cost benefit per pound to the end consumer, the difference between say seven gauge, which is what legend smokers, the ones I build are seven gauge. And I can tell you that actually, I haven't even brought legend up. Um, but seven gauge is like the outlaw pits that Jay Craig builds. Jay is an excellent pit builder. He's outlaw barbecue pits. He's got one heck of a shop. Great guy too. His pits are all seven gauge. Um, you know, legend is seven gauge. And the reason for that is, is because we actually can build them a lot faster that way. 
and that's the minimum thickness that we feel um, is worth it for the end consumer. But also, I get a lot of complaints from consumers like our legend offsets are in barbecue stores. And, you know, the guy that's cooking on a pellet grill will go in and uh, he's been cooking on a Traeger or a Green Mountain Grill or some other brand of pellet cooker for a long time and he loves it. But he wants to get that he wants to get that stick burner going. You know, he sees all these guys cooking on stick burners and he wants to give it a shot and see how he likes it. You know, well, it's a pretty big ledge to step off of financially, honestly. You're going to be spending somewhere between three and five grand, depending on what you get. And, uh, you know, the question that I get from consumers that go to barbecue store dealers that carry our pits the most often is, do you have something smaller? Do you have something thinner? You know, something not as heavy. And heavy on my pit is 650, 700 pounds on the Legend 2400. So, you know, to me, that's a light pit. Like we're in another scope over here dealing with these big offsets and premium pits and stuff. But down at the majority of people aren't really there. You know, they're they're using a pellet grill or a gas grill and uh, maybe a drum smoker here and there, but they want to get their stick burner on and uh, they're having to overcome that heavy material and three sixteenths to them is heavy. So that's another consideration. So anyway, there's no wrong answers in this game, just your answer. So I hope my material here on this podcast was helpful to you. If you have any questions at all, I'm an open book. I won't tell you anything that, uh, you know, will hurt you for sure. So if you head on over to smokerbuilderu.com and sign up, that's a great place to get your start in this in this gig with these building smokers and stuff like that. And uh, we're having a lot of fun over there. So, hey, I appreciate you. Till next time, keep your smoke thin and blue. This is Frank Cox, the barbecue pit engineer, signing off. Take it easy.